What's up, everybody? Welcome to the videos for my core plays for week six of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. If you do enjoy, even if you don't, make sure you have a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just what you mean to me in the comments or call me ugly, leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. And as always, if you like what you see on the screen, it's available completely free for a week with Patreon's free week trials. You can find that link down below in the description or the pinned comment to get access to all the projections, ownership projections, my optimizer, which I will run at the end of this video to see who is popping right now. The data sheet, which is color coded, it's got all the necessary information that you want, plus some advanced statistics and things like that. And also have all the projected stats, which is my own doing there. So if you want to use it for props, be my guest. But it just gives you an idea of how the projections come to what you actually see on the screen. It's got the passing yards, attempts, rushing attempts, all that fun stuff. But anyway, if you like it, you can check it out. If not, that's totally fine. Let's get right into it. And we'll start with the quarterback position because this gives you the direction of your entire lineup. Now, if you're playing cash games, it doesn't always have to be that way, but we kind of focus on single entry tournaments here. Now, I'm someone that plays everything. I'll play cash, I'll play single entry, three max, 20 max, 150 max, whatever it is, even for showdowns. But for these specific videos, I try to gear it towards single entry builds because I know a lot of you probably don't max entry. You probably play one, three lineups, whatever it may be. So that's what I kind of gear it to. And if you are playing a single entry tournament or in a three max, whatever it is, very similar builds here. If I roll with Tua, I need pass catchers with them. We need to correlate our lineups a bit because I don't want to play Tua and then I want to jam in CMC and then I don't have the money for Tyree Kill and then I can't play Jalen Waddle. That just doesn't make any sense. So if I go with Tua, I'm getting Tyreek in and that gives me the direction of my lineup. That probably means I have to get some cheap running backs. So just keep that in mind and then I have to find a run back option in Carolina. So I think you guys get the idea here. Let's go to the top. We have Tua here and I think he's got to be on here almost every slate. The Miami offense is too good. It's too quick. They're going to put up points every single week. But we get a pretty good matchup here versus the Carolina Panthers. We have the highest implied team total in the slate here for the Dolphins at 30.75. And they are two touchdown favorites at home. So the only concern with rostering the passing attack here is one, everyone's going to want to play Mostert, and he's in an excellent spot with no Devon Chan this week or for multiple weeks to come now. And there's always a potential for a blah as they are 14 point favorites. But I'm not really someone that builds for that. There's so much parity in the NFL, a lot of times where you think it might be a blowout, the game kind of stays somewhat close. And even if it is a blowout, you have to imagine that Tyreek and Tua were partly responsible because of that and they got their points anyway. So probably only a tournament play for me. Obviously, you can play Tyreek and Cash whenever you want, but Mostert will be the uh, main star of this slate. So that's where the ownership is going to lie. Justin Fields at 7300 bucks. He's starting to get back up there in price because two back-to-back -back monster weeks over 30 fantasy points. Roughly 300 yards in both games passing and four passing touchdowns. Probably not going to sustain this pace, although it is a good matchup once again versus the Minnesota Vikings. So I wouldn't be like overly surprised if he puts up 30 fantasy points. Also, the two starting running backs are out. No Rashawn Johnson, no Khalil Herbert. So he's left with Deontay Foreman. Then I think it's Darrington Evans, if that's how you say his name. I think he's back there. So maybe this leads to more designed runs for Justin Fields, but the matchup is good, and it's not hard to game stack this. I realize Fields is up there in price a little bit, but DJ Moore, Cole Komet, the two top options here really aren't that expensive, and then you can run it back with a guy like Jordan Addison or KJ Osborne if you want, who also are not that expensive because there's no Justin Jefferson, so the prices are down for the runbacks there. Not like you had to force in at near 10K Justin Jefferson in this stack. Dropping down to Trevor Lawrence here in the 6K range, 6,500 bucks versus the Indianapolis Colts. Their best pass defense is atrocious. So I think him and Calvin Ridley will end up having a decent game here. No Zay Jones, so that kind of consolidates the targets to the main three options here in Christian Kirk, Ridley, and Evan Ingram. And then also Travis Etienne out of the backfield, although I think he can have a great day on the ground as well. 24 and a half implied team total here. The Colts pass defense, obviously, like I said, has not been very good this season, allowing over 280 passing yards per game and they're ranked 25th versus the position. So I know Lawrence hasn't exactly been amazing this year for fantasy purposes, but I do think this is a really good spot at a fair price point. Joe Burrow, 6,300 bucks. If you wrote with me last week, I'll put him in the core plays video in the actual lineup. And I said, I know he's been awful this year, but at some point he's going to end up doing well. And at this price point, I want to be in on it early. I ended up being pretty low on versus Arizona. Jamar Chase wasn't. Didn't make a ton of sense that he didn't come up in ownership, even though his top pass catching option was extremely high owned but Burrow went off versus Arizona Cardinals we get another good matchup here versus the Seattle Seahawks 24 point implied team total here at home and so far Seattle this season allowing over 300 passing yards per game and ranking 23rd versus quarterbacks we do not have official news yet on T Higgins but it sounds like he might be good to go so that's another plus for Joe Burrows to have another excellent option out there but even if he's not 
I'm fine with it. So expect Burrow and Chase Stacks to have a little bit more ownership this week, at least on the Burrow side, but I am fine with it. And then obviously on Seattle, if you're running that back, you have DK Metcalf, you have Tyler Lockett. Matthew Stafford, 6,100 bucks. Looks like he might end up being the chalky quarterback this week, but I'm here for it. He was in my first look video. Didn't really know how ownership was going to play out yet, but looks like a lot of people are going to go this route, which I understand. This should be a pretty popular game. The seven point spread, but the Los Angeles Rams have a near 28 point implied team total here. Fourth highest on the slate, only behind the Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, and the Kansas City Chiefs, who already played. 48 and a half point over under, pretty easy game to stack. The touchdowns haven't really been there for Stafford this season, only averaging one per game, but they're throwing the ball a ton, nearly 38 times per game. He's getting at nearly 300 passing yards. He's been over 303 out of five weeks so far this season. And at 6,100 bucks and a really good matchup versus Arizona, who just got shredded by one leg Joe Burrow. I'm here for it. And you get Cooper Cup back. You have Puka Nakua, two excellent options out there and one of the best wide receivers in the entire league. So Stafford stacks will be popular, but I definitely think it looks pretty good. And then if you're looking for cheap options, we have Baker Mayfield and Josh Dobbs down here. Dobbs offers you a little bit of rushing upside and he actually grades out as one of my better point per dollar options on the slate. Because if you are stacking the Arizona Los Angeles game, it is going to have some ownership. So if you're trying to stack similar players, but get a little bit off the chalk, which will be Matthew Stafford this week, Play Josh Dobbs, you free up a little bit of salary. Maybe you can afford an expensive running back if you want to go that route. It could get you like an ETN over like a Raheem or if you're trying to get off a more chalk or something like that. Baker, I don't hate this game for DFS purposes, but Vegas doesn't love it. It's only 42 and a half, less than a 20 point implied team total here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Baker hasn't been awful this season as far as relative to his price point, I should say. Only 225 passing yards per game, but the touchdowns have been there. But he's only throwing the ball 28 times per game, so we'll have to see if that's sustainable or not. It might end up dipping down a bit, but completing close to 70% of his passes, Mike Evans will be good to go this week. I don't hate it. Detroit's not like a complete stout defense. They're 20th versus quarterbacks, but they've definitely improved from seasons past. And if we're just looking at how I have this statted out, looking at the projections here for the quarterbacks I have on this slate, as you can see, Dobbs down here, 16.3 points. That's a 3.1x value. Currently the best here, Baker Mayfield down there as well. Although when you look at value for quarterbacks, you have to be a little bit careful because sometimes it's really not worth going down all the way down there because they can just absolutely stink up your lineups. All right, heading over to DraftKings. Again, don't copy and paste this lineup, guys. I am simply building it for educational purposes using the type of roster construction that I like to use for single entry tournament builds. And you can use the techniques that I'm using in this video on your own lineups using your own favorite plays. And at quarterback, my two favorite guys this week are probably Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, which... Unfortunately, that's probably going to be the two highest on quarterbacks this week. But since we use Matthew Stafford in the early look video, let's run it back with Joe Burrow here. We're going to plug him in. He's only 6300 bucks, which honestly still feels a bit cheap, especially if he is getting healthier. Not expecting an absolute explosion like we saw last week, but I think he can get you around 20 points, which I would be very comfortable with at that low price point. And moving on to our ball carriers, we actually have a long list this week. So no matter if you want to spend up, spend in the middle or spend down, we got you covered this week. So for the 7K guys, we have three up top here, and they're basically all just volume hogs. David Montgomery, Travis Etienne, Josh Jacobs all find themselves in pretty decent spots or game scripts. For David Montgomery, he hasn't been super efficient this season, but he's getting a ton of work, over 20 carries per game, close to 100 rushing yards, and he has been a touchdown scoring machine. Not too involved in the passing game, but with Jameer Gibbs being out, that obviously helps him just solidify his role in this offense. And not a great matchup versus Tampa, but again, volume trumps all. And the Detroit offense has shown that they can put up some points so far this year, although I do prefer them at home. I think that's fine for Montgomery on the road where they just want to pound the rock. Travis Etienne, great spot versus the Colts. If you are not going with the passing attack, wouldn't make sense to get Travis Etienne in your lineups because I do the Jaguars put up a decent amount of points here. He too is getting close to 20 carries per game, same amount of yards per carry as David Montgomery, but he's more involved in the passing game, which gives him a bit of a higher floor. Hasn't been scoring as many touchdowns as Monty, but he has been finding the end zone at a decent rate this season at 0.6 per game. Josh Jacobs, 7,000 bucks versus New England. Probably going to be a pretty ugly game overall. I just hate Patriot team in general because they're just all ugly, slow, and they don't really put up too many points at all. And it kind of reflects here in the Vegas totals if you're looking at it. 41.5 point over under. 22 point implied team total here for the Las Vegas Raiders on the season. New England's bottom half of the league when it comes to fantasy running backs. So I think Jacobs with his role in the offense, as much as he's involved through the air and on the ground, it's hard not to like him. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite spot in the world, but again, it's just a volume play. Alvin Kamara, 60, 100 bucks. We know he's going to be involved in the passing game. We know he's going to get the bulk of the work on the ground. Great matchup versus Houston. Hard not to like him here. 
And while he doesn't didn't get too involved in the passing game last week, they were absolutely killing New England, so they don't really have to pass the ball too much anyway. So we'll give Kamara a pass there. Still should see five plus targets in most weeks. Kyron Williams, 6,500 bucks. He's one of my favorite cash plays of the entire slate. Both him and Raheem Mostert. And they are much differently priced on DraftKings compared to FanDuel. And while they're still good plays over there, it is way easier to fit them in over on DK. So that's one of the instances where I talked about where there's a lot of overlap in the plays that I like, which is why I only do the build on DraftKings. That's where the majority of you play. Because a lot of the plays I like on DraftKings will transfer over to FanDuel. And while I still will play them over on FanDuel, it just probably won't be as much because I just don't fit in as easily. But Kyron Williams, hard to like him in this offense. 28-point implied team total, 7-point favorite at home. Easy matchup versus the Arizona Cardinals. Love the Rams offense this week. And Raheem Mostert, no Devon chain to steal some work here. So he is going to be pretty much locked in to, I would say, at least 15 touches in this game. And he's the ball in the passing game. But highest top total on the entire slate, 14-point favorites. Easy matchup versus the Panthers. If you are fading Mostert, good luck because this is a dream spot. Joe Mixon, if you don't have the passing attack, which I do in this specific build, so I won't go that route, but we know he's going to be locked in for a ton of work. It's just not going to be efficient at all. Less than four yards per carry, but at least the matchup versus Seattle, just kind of have to hope he falls into the end zone because if he doesn't, probably not going to get you those 100 plus yards or a ton of catches. DeAndre Swift, he's been like kind of the opposite of Joe Mixon where he still gets volume, close to around 15, 16 carries per game, but he's like close to six yards per carry. Decent spot versus the Jets. We saw Isaiah Pacheco have a really good game versus them a couple weeks ago, and they ranked 24th versus running backs this season, allowing over 100 yards per game. And they kind of give it up through the air to running backs as well, which we know DeAndre Swift is certainly capable of doing. Then we have the two cheapies here because of guys being injured. No clue Herbert, no Rashawn Johnson. So Deontay Foreman's kind of the last man standing in that backfield. Decent spot versus Minnesota, and the weather looks pretty crappy for this game. So if the Bears can't air it out, which is not something they want to do anyway, if Foreman can get us 15 carries on the ground, maybe 20 if they love him for some reason and he falls into the end zone, we'll take it. I haven't projected for like 10 to 12 points, so it's nothing spectacular, but if you need the salary, there is a couple of punt options. And then we have Hubbard at 4,300 bucks, no Miles Sanders this week, and we have seen the running backs in this offense at least be involved in the passing game a bit, but the game script is terrible here. So if you're rostering Hubbard, you're just kind of hoping for a random touchdown or a few passes out of the backfield, which is possible to get them there to double digit points, but I do hate the game script for him. All right, heading back over to our lineup here, we have two running back slots to fill out. And since we do not have the Rams passing attack, we don't have the Dolphins passing attack, we could probably just jam in the two chalk RBs here, which I know we're eating a ton of ownership. And I know Burrow's gonna have some decent ownership as well. So it might just end up being a chalkier build, but I am just trying to follow some guidelines here. We'll worry about ownership for our real lineups. But let's put in Kyron Williams here at 6,500 bucks, then Raheem Mostert at 64. Then we'll move on to receivers, which obviously I think we know who the wide receiver one will be with uh, Joe Burrow here. We're going to have to jam in Jamar Chase. And then after that, it's a bit of a guessing game. And moving on to the wide receivers, I know there's a long list here, but keep in mind, we kind of have to stick with the builds that we're going with. So while there's lots of options and they're all pretty good, if you are going with the Jaguar stack, you were kind of stuck in that Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk route. Then for a runback option, you're looking at Michael Pittman or Josh Downs. So even though there's 20 wide receivers here, we just picked out our three slots there and that covers everything else. And you don't even have to think about the other guys, even though there are good plays, just something to keep in mind here. So obviously if you have two, a Tyree kill will be the main option. But I just want to look over some of the stats with you guys, just to explain how good Tyree kill has been. So if we look at some of the advanced player stats, looking at his fantasy points per out ran, we're nearly at one. And there's other really good wide receivers here, like Cooper Cup, he's only at half. Jamar Chase is at a half. Puka Nakua at a half. Evans is up there. But it just goes to show how insane Tyree Kill has been. Even when you put Justin Jefferson up there, it still isn't quite as high as Tyree Kill. And also 4.72 yards per route ran, which again, you're just lapping the field here with Tyree Kill. He's matchup proof. He's too fast for anybody to stop him. He's just a cheat code in this offense, and it works really well. So yeah, cash games, he's fine if you have the money, but obviously they're one option with Tua. Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua here, if you are using Matthew Stafford, it honestly makes sense to jam in both because we know they're going to combine for 20 plus targets pretty much every single week. I know there's a lot of concern with Cooper Cup being back is if it's going to completely take out Pua, Puka from this offense or if Cooper Cup's not going to be the alpha dog anymore. Well, it looks like Cup's still going to be the alpha dog, but it also looks like Puka Nakua is going to be right there with them. So both guys have big roles in this offense. And if we're going to get 300 yards from Stafford almost every single week, it seems like, then yeah, I want them in my lineup. Uh, Jamar Chase, since we have Joe Burrow, he's the number one option there, went off last week. T. Higgins was out, not sure if he's gonna be out this week, but even if he is in, I still love Jamar Chase, but let's roll with T here, even though he's not on here, but I think he's 6,400 bucks. That'd be fine for a double stack. 
you are playing Baker, you pretty much have to play Mike Evans, in my opinion. Calvin Ridley at 6700 bucks. If you have Trevor Lawrence, him and Christian Kirk are going to be the main options. No Zay Jones, so we know where the targets are going to go. And Ridley's been pretty disappointing this year. Had a nice week last week versus the Buffalo Bills. But his real big week this year was week one versus the Indianapolis Colts. And I think he can definitely eat up this defense. If you have Justin Fields and you want to stack with them, you can't play him naked. DJ Moore would be the number one option. He's been great this year. 106 yards, touchdown per game, 27% target share, and close to a 40% market share of the team's air yards. Keep in mind, though, the weather for this game is not looking great. Wind-wise, looks awful, so that could hurt some down-the-field throws to DJ Moore. Pittman, if you are stacking up the Jaguars, him and Josh Downs would be the main options. And while Anthony Richardson's great for fantasy purposes, I do kind of prefer Gardner Minshew being back there just as a drop bad passer. Then we have Thielen from the Panthers, who has been an absolute target hog this year, They're like just consistently getting double-digit targets. So if you were running a Dolphin stack, he's the clear runback option. But even in cash games, I think he's fine. I know he's old, washed up these days, and the quarterback play isn't great. But they're going to be in a positive game script for throwing the ball. And if he's going to get 10-plus targets like he does almost every single week, we're talking just under 10 targets per game this year, with a 26% target share, I will take it. Jordan Addison, I don't love the weather for this game. Plus, you know, he could be a down-the-field threat, which looks like it might be hindered by the wind a little bit. So we might see the Vikings end up running the ball more than we'd like to. But if the weather does cooperate, I do like Addison, but it is something to watch out for. Because obviously, when you take Justin Jefferson out the field, the ball's going to go somewhere. And KJ Osborne, Jordan Addison, KJ Hawkinson will be your main benefactors. Nico Collins, no tank Dell this week, so he can maybe take some targets from the offense. Although it looks like Noah Brown is going to be back this week, so he might just slide right back into that role where it won't affect it too much. But Nico Collins, as good as he's been this year, 93 yards per game, 7.5 targets, 0.6 touchdowns, and a 21% target share. I mean, he just has to be on the list, I think, almost every single week if he's not going to be $6,000, even though this isn't a great matchup versus the New Orleans Saints. Kirk, we talked about. I think he's a fine cash game option. Marquise Brown, another guy that I think will end up being pretty popular. And if you are running uh, Los Angeles Rams stacks, Brown is your number one guy to run it back with. Seven-point dog here on the road in a dome, high total. And on the season, numbers look really good volume-wise. 43% market share of the team's air yards, 29% target share, 75% weighted opportunity share. They're going to throw the ball, eight and a half targets per game. That makes a ton of sense to me, especially in game stacks. So moving back over to DraftKings, we have to fill out our three wide receiver spots. The first one's pretty obvious. We're going with Jamar Chase. We know how well he played last week and why we can't expect that. That's just the upside that he offers you every single week. And we need a run back option from the Seattle Seahawks. And I don't think I want to do it in the tight end form. I don't want to use Kenneth Walker. So we're pretty much looking at DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett, which Lockett comes in a little bit cheaper. We're looking at Metcalf this year, a little bit up and down, but always seems to find a way to get to double digit points. And we know the upside is extremely high with him. Tyler Lockett comes in a little bit cheaper. Targets are pretty similar. He's really only had one big week this year. We had 10 targets, 59 yards, and two touchdowns. Not like you can bank on two touchdowns every week, though. So I'm going to prefer Metcalf, although I am fine with either. We have to drop from Metcalf to Lockett just to be able to fit this lineup together. We'll do it. We still have close to $4,000 left. Now, the main question here is how are we going to double stack with Joe Burrow? Because Irv Smith sucks. They didn't even get a target last time out. So he's not really reliable. And I don't know if T. Higgins is going to play or not. If T. Higgins plays, I like him at 6400 bucks. But also, how's the pain tolerance going to be? What if he gets cracked in the ribs again? Is he going to have to come back out? So let's cheat for now, and we'll take the Tyler Boyd route at 4600 bucks because he's cheaper, and it makes this lineup look a little bit better. And in T. Higgins' absence, talking seven targets, he's just a short yardage guy, but on a PPR slightly DraftKings, like I'll take 10 points with the chance for a touchdown. I actually think he had a touchdown called back last week versus Arizona. So not sure if Higgins is going to play or not. Even if Higgins does play, it's not like Tyler Boyd is not viable. Like we've seen him get targets all season, eight, nine, seven, seven. So roll him out there at 4,600 bucks. And then we have three spots left, but factor in cheap tight end defense, I think we're on the right path. And as per usual, tight end's pretty abysmal this week. If you can't play Hawkinson or Laporta, you're just pretty much throwing in whoever fits. If you have fields, you want to pair him up with Cole Komet. I get it. He's cheap, 4600 bucks, and he's always got the chance for a touchdown, 21% target share. Evan Ingram in Jaguar stacks is fine. Zach Ertz, if you're trying to find a cheap runback option for the Rams stacks and you can't quite afford Marquise Brown, or if you're going double stack with Josh Dobbs, Zach Ertz, Marquise Brown, that's fine. And Logan Thomas, I think, is probably the best cash tight end of the week. Coming off a big game last week and on the season, six targets per game, 45 yards, 16.5% target share, always a chance for a touchdown. And very, very small sample size, and I hate doing this with tight ends. But the Falcons are currently allowing the second most points per game to the tight end position at 17, 62 yards, and over half a receiving touchdown. So at that price point, 
I think Logan Thomas is fine. And then defenses, we all hate them, but we're forced to play some. So what I always do is I just scroll all the way to the bottom and look for the first viable one. And there's not a ton of like cheap this week. The Browns before the line moved insane, where they were only three point dogs at home. It's only a 35 and a half point over under and the weather's going to suck here. So I'm expecting a pretty low scoring game and still 22 and a half points is an awful at this price point with how good their defense has been. As you can see, a big pricing difference from DK and Fandle. So I'm not completely out on the Browns, but it's not going to feel good playing such a big dog there. I think the Lions are somewhat fine there as being favorites with only a 19 point implied team total against them. The Vikings versus the Bears, the Patriots versus the Raiders. I think you're all viable, but honestly, if you can't afford the 49ers or the Dolphins this week, I would really just play a random one, whichever fits. And finishing off this lineup, I'm just going to plug in Logan Thomas here at tight end because we're going to need a little bit of savings here. And I obviously can't afford a TJ Hawkins or anything like that. So I think he's probably the safest route to go here below 4K. So if we go there, we have 3800 bucks left for our last two spots. Defense is going to be tricky because I don't know exactly what kind of range I want to be in for flex. Probably anywhere from at least mid 4K to mid 5K. That's probably about as good as we can get because if we just plug in the cheapest defense here because I'm not playing the Panthers, we'd have the Browns and that leaves us 5400 bucks, which is not a bad spot because I think that leaves us with, yeah, we have Marquise Brown here at 5300 bucks and we have Christian Kirk at $5,400. And honestly, I don't hate that because I'd like to get a piece of that Jaguars offense. So if we're looking at this build, it does work. Like zero on the table. We have Joe Burrow double stack with Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. Ran back with DK Metcalf. We have Kyron Williams and Raheem Mostert at running back. And then Logan Thomas, Browns defense, Christian Kirk to fill it out. So honestly, not a bad route to go. If you want to save some money and spend up on defense, you could take Kirk out, go with like a Deontay Foreman or Hubbard at running back. That'd save you $1,000. And then you could probably afford like a 3K defense, which is fine. But like I said, don't copy and paste this, guys. Use your own favorite plays, but you can use a similar technique that I used here. And I think it's probably going to get you on the right path for a single entry. Like I said, I wanted to run the optimizer at the end to see who is popping as of right now. And this will help give you a good landscape of the entire slate on how ownership is going to play out or who is projected what. Because I can't imagine I'm going to be too far off the majority of most sites. So I head over to the builds here. And I just did a quick setting with some randomness on there. So these aren't the exact projections. And then I made sure there were stacking options for tournaments. So let me head over here to the players tab and we'll see who is getting jammed in lineups, which Raheem Mostert, no question about it. I actually haven't been projected as my RB1 on the entire week, even above CMC, which sounds insane, but the Dolphins running back position has been extremely valuable this year. When you take a chance out of the equation, Mostert should get the bulk here. The only concern would be is that they're up a big amount and they just bring in a backup, but with no Jeff Olsen being ready yet, it's pretty much just Mostert back here. So even with some randomness and some stack settings, he still gets put in almost every single lineup. Kyron Williams also getting jammed in there. Then we have a massive drop off to where at 37%, again, didn't play around with exposure or anything, just ran it dry just with some randomness. Logan Thomas getting put in there, Patriots defense, Marquise Brown, Christian Kirk, Adam Thielen. So it looks like it really likes the mid range this week overall for builds. It doesn't really like a stars and scrubs approach because Honestly, when I was looking at like wide receivers this week, I didn't really see any punt options I liked. So it kind of makes sense that almost all these lineups are very balanced out. Like you're not seeing too much uh, star power here. Like the first big name we see is Cooper Cup down here at 23%. And then you're seeing Jamar Chase and Tyreek Hill is all the way down there at 13. So I guess you'd have to up your two exposure. You want more Tyreek to pop up, but not really surprised the guys that are popping here. It just looks like a balanced approach is the way most projection systems wind up liking it this week. And looking at team exposure here, Los Miami, Los Angeles, Arizona, Jacksonville, which I think is pretty much on par with everybody else. Game stack wise, Miami, Carolina, which most of that's Raheem Mostert, Rams, Arizona, Patriots, New England, which I think is mostly Patriots defense or just maybe either defense with Josh Jacobs. And I also just realized that we have an ungodly amount of Josh Dobbs here. So I probably wouldn't recommend playing 30% Josh Dobbs, but Point but otherwise, he does pop up quite a bit and loves that game overall. So it makes sense that he would get put in lineups if you're not playing around your exposures. But with that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you did enjoy. And if you did, make sure you would like down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Leave them down below. I'm more than happy to get back to you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. I wish you all the best of luck. And I'll see you all next time.